So here's another game that I picked up on itch.io when I was just kind of browsing. Uh, it looked super cute. Um, and like it had just a really interesting atmosphere. Um, I'm not sure what else to say before starting, so let's jump in. Once upon a time, there was a humble recluse. Though they had no need for society, they did often find themselves home to a loneliness that they could never quite shake. In the morning, the sun would rise. At night, it would set. The recluse would observe this splendor, knowing that the sight would be made all the more beautiful by having someone to share it with. It wasn't that they desired a relationship. Perhaps it was a flame that had burned them one too many times. Or perhaps they were simply disinterested. No, a child. That's what they wanted. Someone to take care of, to teach. Unfortunately, it was a longing that could not be found. Not in these woods, alone. However, we are never quite as alone as we think, are we? One day, a witch appeared, as if drawn by the intensity of the recluse's desire. The lumber that the recluse had spent the morning gathering slipped through their hands as they spotted her, the witch of the woods. She began to speak. You desire a child, yes. For some, those are quite easy to come by. But not you, it would seem. Let us make a deal, then. If you do three simple chores for me, I will present you with a daughter of your very own. The recluse, caught up in a moment of naivete, quickly agreed. The witch, knowing that the recluse was destined to accept, simply nodded and began to deliver the first of these so-called chores without hesitation. Growth struggles to be achieved without presence. Offer me that which embodies the emotion you would provide for your daughter. The recluse pondered for a moment, thinking of what they had to offer. A tear-stained portrait? Oh. A buried memory was retrieved from the recluse's nightstand. The hope was that the subject's lonesome lilac leer would provide their daughter a humbling understanding of mortality to enrich their view on life. Returning to the witch, the recluse held out their offering. My, I suppose all growth comes at a cost, no? Feeling a tender hollowness, the recluse declined to answer. The second day. The recluse slept more soundly that night than they had in ages. Having a purpose again soothed them, even if they had found themselves caught up with a witch. They elected not to think about that, though. Instead, when the morning came, they simply did what they had to do. Which is to say, they got up and went to meet with the witch. Upon watching the recluse's approach, a sardonic smile lit the witch's face. You completed your first task admirably. Two more and I can finally give you what you want. She paused for only a moment before delivering her next message of import. It is important for a young person to be well grounded in this world. I hear. Bring me a jar of soil to help with this process. Keep in mind that not all dirt is the same though. Consider the source carefully. Soil? That did sound somewhat magical, the recluse supposed. Left with this vague prompt, they considered their options. A barren spot of the forest, long since struck by some invisible ailment. Okay. Your favorite foraging nook. A quiet graveyard. The most picturesque section of the forest your eyes have ever set upon. I see. I'll do a quiet graveyard. The walk to the gravesite was quiet. When the recluse arrived, they looked down at the grave of their mother. Perhaps this child wouldn't be related by blood, but she could be related by dirt, if nothing else. Arriving back at their meeting place, the recluse was excited to share their selection with the witch. So that's what you picked, eh? Very well. It shall do. Feeling the need to scrub their skin, the recluse retired to their hut to cleanse themselves. The third day. With two assignments complete, the recluse could feel their excitement grow. 
If this witch was being honest, and for some reason they felt that she was, then that meant this could be the last night they spent without a child. They hoped so, at least. That was all they could do. Barely remembering to get dressed, the recluse dashed to the meeting spot. Again, the witch had been waiting there for them. Welcome back, recluse. Are you prepared? Today is your big day, is it not? The last task is an easy one, or at least I believe so. Bring me something colorful, something bright, that you think will suit her. When they were first told of the three tasks, the recluse had imagined things that were much more difficult. This seemed so easy as to be a trick, which they supposed only meant they should take it seriously, as if a mistake could mean death. With death in mind, the recluse needed to decide where to search for color. A field of flowers? A stony river. Let's go with the river. Though underwater wasn't the first place most people thought of for color, the recluse understood there were many shades that people failed to consider. They arrived at a nearby river, glancing into the glassy water to spy a variety of small, shining stones. Marble, the pale proprietor of possibility. Garnet, the lost maroon heralds of bygone storms. Jasper, nature's deep brown canvas. Turquoise, prized symbols of luck and fortune. Slate, a simple yet sturdy gray stone. I'll go with turquoise. The vivid hue of a chunk of turquoise caught the recluse's eye, beckoning their hand. The stone presented itself like the sky, like the waters, like a purity rarely seen. Stone in hand, they returned to the witch, captivated by nature's beauty. Discover the color turquoise. Oh, that's so cool. The recluse returned to the witch's hut, colored item in hand. She silently took the object, nodding her head to the recluse in recognition. The recluse stood there for a moment, unsure, before finally the witch realized what they expected. Oh, you want your promised daughter, don't you? Her voice was almost mocking, but at least it was not overtly cruel. I suppose I must tell you that I lied, human. I do require several more trifling things from you. The first is a matter of payment. The recluse should have known that everything is for a cost. Pay me now with wealth. Pay me now with life. Pay me soon, sometime soon, in larger quantities, at a much later date in the way that I choose. <sighs> Feeling a little, a little wild. Do I have to kill someone? They told the witch they would offer life as payment. Certainly. Stepping forward, she took them in a cold, yet not unkind embrace. They awoke hours later, with an uneasy feeling that something was missing. The, sitch w <laughs> the witch was still there, waiting for the recluse. With payment settled, the witch simply smiled and handed the recluse a small pot. Humans are tricky, but mushrooms are much more resilient. Consider this an upgrade. Don't worry, eventually she will develop a mind. Simply give her time, as much as she needs. Soon, your wish will be in full bloom. I suppose, with all that settled though, there is one last thing for you to consider. A young girl needs a proper name. The recluse thought on the witch's demand before offering the final thing they had to give. What is her name? Oh, that's tough. What's well, spring? So maybe I want to do something spring related. I did turquoise as well for my color. <sighs> I'm going to have to take a sec on this. I decided on celia, like um, mycelium. I thought that would be cute. Then she walked away, only fate knowing if the two should ever meet again. Chapter 2. Cultivation Though the recluse was unsure of the specifics, they did realize that it was important to heed her instructions. Care for the pot and the dirt and everything that lay within. 
So the recluse geared up, as any parent should, and assessed the things they needed to raise a child. Finances, in case the nearby village had goods or services that you could not provide. Nutrients for the child, to help it go, grow strong. They would need plenty, as it would be depleted on a daily basis. And finally, the recluse's own stamina could not be ignored. One cannot burn the candle from both ends indefinitely. Thus began the longest growing season of the recluse's life. One day, you awake slightly earlier than usual. In your somewhat somnambulant state, you hear an ethereal croon originating from your garden. When you go out, you spot it, a small fairy clad in turquoise sitting amongst your crops. Offer a coin to the fairy to gain their favor. Build a small fairy garden in your daughter's room using supplies. Hunt the fairy to use as food for your daughter catch the fairy to sell in town. Whoops. I'll build a small fairy garden. What does info do? Okay. There's only so many hours in a day. I see. I'll bury a small fairy garden. I bury, create, I don't know what word I was not getting correctly. Without delay, you quickly gather your supplies. Greenery, some common foods, hell, throw in a drop of blood. Faye loved that sort of thing. After consulting some books to ensure that it's an appropriate space, you lure the fairy in with treats. Though they seem unsure at first, the fairy eventually accepts your offer of a home. Though your daughter is not yet old enough to appreciate this pet, you're sure she will in time. Game trait, very familiar. The decision being made, life continued. Recently, you've begun to think about your daughter's living quarters, specifically her pot. You have so few ideas. Nope, you have a few ideas how to improve it, but you only have so much time. Which do you decide to move forward with? Infuse the soil with a drop of your own blood. Ensure that her soil remains ever damp. Buy some fancy substrate from town. Decorate the pot. Use cooking scraps as compost. Um. Cooking scraps is a cute idea. Recently when cooking, you have noticed some waste. Perhaps the peels and scraps that you normally throw into the woods could have a better use. You begin to place small fragments of your meals in a special bin. It almost feels as though you are sharing a meal with your daughter, and that thought brings you warmth. Hopefully she likes your cooking. She'll have a lot of it in her life. Her quality of life having been improved, life continues. Sometime later. What trait was that? Mushroom creature. Oh, that's a little horrifying, but I love her. One day, you awaken to the sound of rustling movement. You find your daughter has grown enough to be capable of rudimentary locomotion. The creature sink slinks aloud. The creature slinks around uneasily, and a cute little face now greets you on her once featureless body. Her demeanor seems gloomy and shy, preferring to sit in dark corners for long periods of time. Encourage her discretion. Spend time nurturing her environment. Motivate her to do something safer. Oh, uh, I will nurture her environment. You decide that now is the best time to promote her growth, spending extra effort improving her living conditions. Your daughter seems to appreciate the attention and emotes cheerfully. The decision being made, life continued. One evening, you hear a light knocking at your door. Quite a rare occurrence. Peeking through the window, you witness none other than the Witch of the Woods standing on the doorstep of your humble hut. Could she be here for a visit? Or to settle a debt? Introduce her to your daughter? Privately request a stipend. Um, well, it may be a bad idea, but, you know. 
I'm not sure how the other option is any better. Perhaps it was time for your daughter to meet the witch. Maybe she could even learn a thing or two. The two of you answer the door and invite the gloomy woman inside for a dry and awkward small talk. Something about the way the two absently stare at each other. You wonder if they've made some sort of connection today. Decision being made, life continued. You awaken only to discover your daughter is covered in tiny parasitic creatures. For the sake of her health, you should probably find a way to get rid of the little pests. She's all organic, leave them be. Buy some fine herbal pesticides. Give the child a thorough rinse. I'll try some herbal pesticides. I have plenty of money, I think. Dreading the potential spread of disease, you decide to seek some strong elixirs from the local apothecary. When you buy the potion, when you apply the potion, it seems to be instantly absorbed into her skin. It lends her a healthy shimmer and exterminates the bugs. The decision being made, life continues. Child? Despite a rocky introduction, your daughter is as civil as any human child now. Sometime later. One morning, you notice your daughter is nowhere to be seen. Eventually, you discover her, hiding in a narrow crevice under a large stump. To your surprise, the creature had now taken the form of a young girl. You feel relieved to confirm that the witch hadn't betrayed you. At your approach, she retreats shyly into the hole. She doesn't seem scared, but doesn't want to leave. I'll encourage her to come out. You kneel beside the stump and offer your hand, telling her it's time to go. She smiles apprehensively, but accepts. The two of you return home, hand in hand. The decision being made, life continued. Your daughter needs food too, and you've just run out. You need to find something to feed her soon, or she'll surely starve. Spend the day gathering nutritious substrate. You can't spare the time today. She'll have to go hungry. I only have one stamina. And that really concerns me. I'll do it. You spend the day foraging and digging in the woods, and return with a heap of mushroom food for your hungry daughter. It's a little hard to be sure, but it seems like she's thankful for your efforts. The decision being made, life continued. The weather is nice, and you're feeling up to doing some foraging today. It may be easier if you focus on something specific before you head out. Take your daughter foraging for river plants, mushrooms. Send her alone to gather ferns while you relax. I don't want to do that, but I'm, I've never... I think my stamina has been at one the whole time, so I don't know what the range of that is. For river plants or for mushrooms? I'll do river plants, and maybe that'll make it so she's more equipped to forage on her own in the future. The two of you find some watercress and catch some crawfish, then take a break to play in the water. She seems excited to just spend some time floating, a skill she seems to already excel at. You have to force her out of the river just before sunset. You need some time to wring her out before bed, after all. The decision being made, life continued. Okay, I think I'm an end. One night, you find yourself struggling to sleep. Your mind waters as you consider your current place in life. You've lived peacefully with your daughter for many moons. Initially, it was strange. Well... It never stopped being strange, but you were always thankful for the company. Besides, the affection you felt for her was like any parent would feel toward their child. That was normal, at least. Your thoughts turned to the concept of time, particularly how you were once alone, and how you are afraid that you will be again, someday. Your daughter has had more and more curiosities about the outside world. It's only a matter of time before she wants to strike her own path. You hope you will be fulfilled now. You hope you've done enough. Ultimately, you find comfort in what you've done. You may have had many failures in your life, but there's one thing you know you can die proud of. 
and a new beginning. Did that say right? Okay. Um, hopefully that saved correctly. This game is super interesting. Um, I've really been enjoying playing it. I really like the atmosphere and the art is really pretty. Um, I'm excited to see like what else happens next. Um, I'll probably take a break for now and then pick it back up and you know, hope that it saved what I'm doing. And uh, yeah. Thanks for watching and uh, stay swaggin', alright? <laughs>